Hello everyone, welcome back to the Chemical Engineering channel. And as you know, we are following the module of heat transfer operations these days. And in this regard, we are bringing the lecture number 11, which is focused on the numericals which are related to log mean temperature difference. In our previous lecture, which was lecture number 10, we had discussed the log mean temperature difference for parallel flow, counter flow, and cross flow multipass heat exchangers. And now we will be solving the three numericals today related to the LMTD, which is one of the methods used for the analysis of heat exchangers. So before starting this tutorial, if you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. So this is numerical number one and its statement is that the steam which is in the condenser of a power plant is to be condensed at a temperature of 30 degrees centigrade with cooling water from a nearby lake which enters the tube of the condenser at 14 degrees centigrade and leaves at 22 degrees centigrade. So it means that steam is at shell side and water is in tube side. The surface area of the tubes is 45 square meter and the overall heat transfer coefficient is 2100 watt per square meter degree centigrade. Determine number one, mass flow rate of the cooling water needed and number two, rate of condensation of steam in the condenser. So let's solve it, but before solving it, let's have some assumptions for it. And the assumptions are that the steady state operation exists in the system. The heat exchanger is well insulated, so there is no heat loss to the surroundings. Number three, potential and kinetic energy changes are negligible in the system. No fouling because fouling plays a vital role in the heat transfer rate and fluid properties remain constant. And the properties which are determined, the heat of vaporization of water at 30 degrees centigrade is HFG is equal to 2431 kilojoule per kg. Specific heat of cold water at average temperature of 18 degrees centigrade is 4184 joule per kg degree centigrade or 4.184 kilojoule per kg degree centigrade. So this is the overall schematic and you can see steam is entering at 30 degree centigrade and leaving at 30 degree centigrade. There is only a phase change involved and we have discussed that such type of heat emits out or is lost by this stream is latent heat. Well that latent heat is gained by this cooling water whose temperature is increased from 14 degree centigrade to 22 degree centigrade. So we will first calculate the delta T1 which is equal to TH in minus TC out. Obviously, it's a counter flow system. So TH in is 30 degree centigrade, which is this one. And TC out is 22 degree centigrade. So delta T1 is 8 degree centigrade. Then delta T2 TH out, which is again 30 degree centigrade minus TC in, which is 14 degree centigrade. So delta T2 is 16 degree centigrade. And the formula of log mean temperature difference is delta T1 minus delta T2 divided by natural log of delta T1 over delta T2. We have studied this relation in our previous case. So the answer for log mean temperature difference is 11.5 degree centigrade. The final answer is pasted over here. And we know that Q is equal to UA delta Tm. And we know the value of Q, it is given in the problem statement, 2100 watt per square meter degree centigrade. Area is 45 square meter. 11.5 degree centigrade is the log mean temperature difference. And the overall heat transfer rate is 1087 kilowatt, which is computed from the first part. Now we need to calculate the flow rate of water, which is cooling water required for the process. And how it is calculated, Q is equal to MCP dt. And M, we need to calculate the value of M. So it will become M is equal to Q over CP delta T. That is T out minus T in because it is a cold stream. And 1087 kilojoule per second or kilowatt. 4.184 kilojoule per kg degree centigrade and 22 minus 14. So kilojoule will cancel out with kilojoule and accordingly we will get and degree centigrade will cancel out with degree centigrade. So 32.5 kg per second of cooling water is required to carry out this process. Now the second part is that rate of condensation of steam. And since it involves latent heat only, so it will be Q is equal to M multiplied by H of Fg, which is latent heat of vaporization. And we know the value of Q which is 1087 kilojoule per second. We know the value of HFG, which we have defined in the properties. So we get the answer of 0.45 kg per second. So for 0.45 kg per second condensation of steam, we need 32.5 kg per second of water. So this is the first part of our today's activity or first numerical of our today's activity. Now moving to the second numerical. We have been given that a counter flow double pipe heat exchanger is to heat water from 20 degree centigrade to 80 degree centigrade at a rate of 1.2 kg per second. So we have been given the mass flow rate. We have been given the initial temperature. We have been given the final temperature. The heating is to be accomplished by a geothermal water available at 160 degree centigrade 
and at a mass flow rate of 2 kg per second. So its mass flow rate is given and initial temperature is given. The inner tube is thin walled and has a diameter of 1.5 cm. So we have been given the specification of the tube dia. We have been given the specification of pore stream, inlet outlet temperature, its flow rate. But for hot stream, we have been given information about the inlet temperature and flow rate, but no information about the outlet temperature. So if the overall heat transfer coefficient of the exchanger is 640 watt per square meter degree centigrade, determine the length of the heat exchanger required to achieve the desired heating. So we have to calculate this part. But again, the same assumptions which we have used for the question number one, that the steady state operations, heat exchanger surface is well insulated, no change in kinetic and potential energy or any changes are negligible, no fouling and fluid pro properties remain constant. So we take the specific heat of water and geothermal fluid to be 4.18 and 4.31 kJ per kg degree centigrade. Again, you can use different tables to estimate it. And in calculations for water, we know Q is equal to MCPDT. We know the value of M which is 1.2 kg per second. We know the value of CP which is 4.18. We know the T outlet which is 80. We know the inlet which is 20. So the answer is 301 kilowatt. Now for the geothermal water, we know Q is equal to MCPDT. Again, the correlation will be the same but with the difference that in the water case, it was T out minus T in. Now here it is T in minus T out. But we know the T in, we know the CP, we know the M. The amount of heat gained by the water is equal to amount of heat lost by this geothermal water. So again, we know this value of Q because we are assuming no heat leak in the process. So we know this value of T out and T out is equal to T in minus Q over MCP. According to the values are substituted and we get the value of T out as 125 degree centigrade. So accordingly, this one will be our representation. Cold water is entering, hot geothermal water is entering 160 degree centigrade here 125. The diameter is 1.5. The water is entering at 20 degree centigrade and exiting at 80 degree centigrade. So we know the delta D1 which is T H in which is 160 degree centigrade minus T C out which is 80 degree centigrade. So accordingly, it will be 80 degree centigrade. Then delta T2, TH out minus TC in, TH out is 125 minus 20. So it is 105 degree centigrade. And accordingly, delta TLM log min temperature is calculated as 92 degree centigrade. Now we need to calculate the surface area of heat exchanger. Q is equal to U A delta TLM. We know the value of U. U values is known. We know the value of log min temperature difference. So accordingly, A is equal to Q over U delta TLM. And area is calculated as 5.11 square meter but we have to calculate the length of the exchanger so how it is calculated area is equal to pi dl we know the value of diameter it has been given in the problem statement we know the value of area which we have calculated just now so l can be calculated as a over pi d and accordingly length is equal to 108 meters so that's how the length of the exchanger is calculated for a double pipe heat exchanger where both hot and cold fluids are water one of them is geothermal water and the other one is the simple water involved in the process. Now moving to the numerical number 3 and a test is conducted to determine the overall heat transfer coefficient in an automotive radiator that is a compact cross flow. So first two examples were related to the counter system and now we are moving to the cross flow system. So cross flow of water to air heat exchanger with both fluids unmixed. The radiator has 40 tubes of internal diameter 0.5 cm and length 65 cm in a closely spaced plate fin matrix. Hot water enters the tubes at 90 degree centigrade at a rate of 0.6 kg per second and leaves at 65 degree centigrade. So we know that at the tube side we have hot water or hot media involved. Air flows across the radiator through the interfin spaces and is heated from 20 to 40 degree centigrade. So cold at the outer side and hot water in the tube side because that will be important if you remember that a FT correction factor is involved in it and for this we know the value of P and R. So determine the overall heat transfer coefficient of this radiator based on the inner surface area of tubes. So based on the statement we will first have some assumptions that steady state operation conditions, changes in kinetic and potential energy are negligible, fluid properties remain constant and the properties are that the specific heat of water at the average temperature of 90 plus 65 divided by 2 is equal to 77.5 is 4.195 kJ per kg degree centigrade. If you remember our previous case where we have been discussed theoretically that usually we take the values 
almost constant that also causes a little loss in accuracy but we have to sometimes compromise it but we are not compromising it here so for water q is equal to mcp dt we know the value of m which is 0.6 kg per second pp is this one t out minus t in is 90 minus 65 and accordingly q is calculated as 62.93 kilowatt now tube side heat transfer area a is equal to n multiplied by pi dl because we have 40 number of tubes so accordingly Diameter is 0 0.005 meter, length is 0.65 meter, so area is equal to 0 0.408 square meter, which is tube side heat transfer area. And this is the overall representation. Air is at the outer side, while water is at the tube side. So delta T1 again TH in minus TC out. TH in is 90 degree centigrade, while TC out is 40 degree centigrade. So it is 50. Then TH out, which is 65 degree centigrade, and this one is 20. So 45 degree centigrade, and delta T LM is calculated as 47.6 degree centigrade. But again, for value of F, because if you remember our correlation, that is Q is equal to UA delta T LM multiplied by the value of F. So for F, we need to depend on the two temperature correlations P and R. And that P is equal to T2 minus T1 over capital T1 minus small t1. The small t represents the temperature of the fluid at the tube side, while the capital T1 represents at the shell side. So this one in the tube side, basically we have the hot fluid. T2 is 65 and T1 is 90. And this T1 represents the temperature of water, which is 20 degrees centigrade. So 20 minus 90. So P is calculated as 0.36. Now for the value of R, T1 minus T2, which is this one t1 and t2 and this one is t2 and t1 so 20 minus 40 65 minus 90 so r is calculated as 0.8 now based on the given problem statement which is single pass cross flow with both fluids unmixed we have the value of p which is 0.36 if you take it as 0.36 and this value is 0.8 so we have been given the line for 0.8 so intersecting it as we get the value of f as 0.97 so this is how the graph is interpolated in the system that this one is the p we take a vertical line and then intersect with it and accordingly we get the value of f in the system and overall heat transfer coefficient q is equal to u a s f multiplied by delta t f now we know the value of this one we know the value of f we know the value of area we know the value of q so u is equal to q over a f delta t and accordingly we know the values and u is calculated as 3341 watt per square meter degree centigrade so that's how we compute the overall heat transfer coefficient for a cross flow system and there is one additional calculation because of the cross flow nature that we have to include the value of the correction factor in the system. So that's it from this video. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to the channel. Currently 99.5% watch time is from those viewers who have not subscribed to the channel. So I will request once again. So please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel and our next video will be on the effectiveness NTU method which is the second methodology for the analysis of heat exchanger. Till then it's goodbye, stay tuned.